Hey there. In this video, we are going to graph and analyze absolute value functions using transformations, or in other words, expansions and compressions, reflections, and translations. All right, so right now we have our basic absolute value function here represented several ways. We have an equation up here, although it doesn't say y equals the way the software displays it. We're going to imagine it says y equals this, y equals absolute value of x. We have it also as a graph right here, that V-shaped thing. And we also have it as a table over here for some selected points on that function. Now, I have some sliders down here that I'm going to use to change the equation. And then we're going to look at how the corresponding graph changes and how the points in the table change. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add or subtract a number on the end of this function, outside of this function. Now I'm going to use this slider k here to do that. So first of all, if I change this so that this say goes up to 2 like that, I've added 2 onto the end of that function outside of the absolute value brackets. The first thing you notice is that that graph gets shifted two units up. Every single point on the graph, this vertex gets shifted two units up, but every point gets shifted two units up. This is a vertical translation of two units up. If you look at the points in the table, you also see that same thing because uh, you've added two here, which causes all the points to move up. All the Y values have changed. For the same X value, say for one here, instead of one, it's three. It's the same thing in the table. This used to say one, one. In fact, we can go back and see that. When this was down here, it says one, one, right there. And if I go back up here, it's gonna say three now. Every Y value in that table is now two units larger because you've just added two after you worked out what the absolute value would have been before. Similarly, if I go down to a negative number here, let's go down to negative three. This is also a vertical translation. It's a vertical translation of three units down. The whole graph is shifted down three units, every single point. This vertex is down three units. Every other point is down three units. In the table, you notice the same thing. All of the Y values are now three units lower. This value here, this point here that was 0, 0 is now 0, negative 3. For the same x value, the y value is 3 lower for all of those. All right. So when you add or subtract a number outside of the function, it causes a vertical translation. Now let's go back and we're going to do something different now, different kind of change to the equation. We are going to add or subtract a number inside of the function here. So I'm going to use this slider h here to add or subtract a number inside the function. First of all, I'm going to put a negative number there. So I'm going to go over maybe to, uh, let's do 4 there, like that. Now the first thing you notice there is probably that this graph has been shifted 4 units to the right. This vertex has been shifted every single point. You pick any point here, the corresponding point is 4 units to the right. In the table, if you look at the values in the table, the same thing is true. Now I'll slip it back here so you can compare. Notice what changes in the table. Go back to that. And as I'm changing that, the x values are changing. Those x values are all four units bigger than they would have been. All right? This was five, five, four, four, three, three. These are all four units greater than they were before, which corresponds to the graph being four units to the right. Now that might seem counterintuitive. Why, when there's a number subtracted here, does the graph go in the positive direction? Well, it kind of makes sense because before you apply this absolute value function, if the first thing you're going to do is subtract four, you need to start with an x value that's four bigger to end up with the same y value. To get this same y value here, I have to start with 9 instead of 5 because I'm going to subtract 4. If I put the 9 in there, subtract 4, I get 5. Absolute value of that is 5. Same thing for any one of these other values. Any of these x values has to be 4 greater to balance out that subtract 4. If I go the other way here, let's go to 3, let's say. 
I have x plus 3 here. I've added a number inside there, and you notice if you look at those x values, they're all three units lower now. Again, because if the first thing I'm gonna do is add three, I have to start three lower to end up with the same y value. This is a horizontal translation left three units. Every point's moved to the left. All right, we'll look at the third kind of transformation here. The third kind of change I'm gonna make here is I'm gonna multiply this absolute value of x by something. I'm going to use the slider a down here to do that. Before I do that, what I'm going to do is we're going to show these points so that we can see them in the table, but we can also see them visually on the graph and kind of follow what's happening. Uh, let's say first I'm going to make this a 2. If I multiply that by 2, you notice probably first of all what happens is this graph is this taller, skinnier uh, V shape here. Uh, we're going to think of it as taller because we're going to see that those points for that same x value here, this one instead of being at 1 is now 2. This one that was at 2 is now 4 units above. All right, These points are now higher or they're farther away from the axis. All of the y values over here for the same x values have doubled. All right, We've multiplied them by 2 which makes sense. Whatever we would have had for absolute value of x is now twice as much. So when you have this a value being something that is uh, bigger than one here, all of those values get bigger, multiplying by that, that same value. And if I make it smaller, let's say I make it a half, 0.5, all of those values are now smaller, they're half as much. Right? When I stop on 0.5 there, this that would have been four is now two, right? This four that would have been four, four is now four, two. All of these y values are half as much. So that causes what you call a vertical expansion or compression. When that number you're multiplying it by is bigger than one, it's a vertical expansion. And when it's a number smaller than one, it's a vertical compression. All of the y values are compressed, they're smaller. And if I also make this negative, it is going to also be a vertical reflection. All right, so if I stop at uh, negative 0.2, all of these values are now 0.2 times as much and they're also negative. They were all positive because of this absolute value, but then if you multiply it by negative, now they're all negative. Okay, all of the y values are now negative. All right, so those are some of the changes that result from multiplying or adding or subtracting in different places in the equation of this absolute value function. What we're going to do now is see if we can use those ideas to quickly predict what the graph is going to look like for a variety of absolute value functions. All right, so we have here y equals absolute value of x minus 3. The minus 3 outside of the function is going to cause a vertical translation three units down. So that vertex is going to be three units down to there and every other point on the graph is going to be three units down so we can just draw the same shape but three units down like this and that's the graph of y equals absolute value of x minus three let's do another one all right y equals absolute value of x plus one a vertical translation one unit up so the entire graph is going to be shifted one unit up so that's the vertex and every point is going to be shifted up so we can just draw the graph one unit up on here use that idea of transformations to create the graph there you go we'll do another one y equals absolute value of x plus one the x plus one inside the absolute value bracket is going to cause a horizontal translation to the left by one unit so this vertex is going to be right there and every other point in the graph is also going to be shifted so we'll draw it in there like that let's do another one y equals absolute value of x minus 2 that x minus 2 inside the absolute value causes a horizontal translation two units to the right and so we can just draw the entire thing. Vertex shifted two units to the right. Everything shifted two units to the right. Like that. 
that's the graph of that function. Let's do another one. Y equals three absolute value of X, three times the absolute value of X. This is a vertical expansion by a factor of three. All the points are three times as tall. So for example, this point that is one is now going to be three. This point that is one over here is going to be three times as tall like that. This point that's two units is going to be six. So it's going to be off the grid a little bit there. Basically, we're drawing those lines so that they're steeper and taller. And that, so that's the graph of that y equals three absolute value of x. That same shape, three times as tall. This zero point down here is invariant. It doesn't change. Let's do another one. Now y equals negative one half absolute value of x. We have two things going on there. We actually have a vertical reflection and a vertical compression by a factor of one half. So what that means is that that absolute value graph is going to be opening down and it's going to be compressed. All the y values will be half as much. So for example, this one here that's two units is going to only be one unit, but it's going to be down instead. The same on the other side. This point is not going to change. It's invariant. It stays where it is. This one that is one unit is going to be a half a unit below like that. And then all of them are going to follow suit like that. This one that's four is going to be two, but below like that. And we can kind of fill that in from there to draw that graph. All right. So that's the graph of y equals negative one half absolute value of x. We're going to try a couple right now where you have combined transformations, more than one change to the equation. We have here y equals 2 absolute value of x minus 1 minus 3. You have three changes going on there. You have a vertical expansion by a factor of 2. You have a horizontal shift, 1 to the right. And you have a vertical shift three down. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that the thing is twice as tall. It's going to be that taller shaped V and then it's going to be shifted one that way and three that way. So I am just going to start from this point down here and just draw the thing twice as tall. All the Y value is going to be twice as much. So instead of it being that that same V shape, it's going to be twice as tall. So this is going to be two units right here and four units right there and so on when I draw the thing. That graph right there, that graph is that function. Those three changes have been applied. It's been vertically expanded by two. It's been shifted one to the right and three down. Let's look at one last example. Okay, here we need to write an equation from this given graph. We have this vertex right here. So we can see that this thing has been shifted two to the left and four up. So we've got a horizontal translation to left. We have a vertical translation for up. And it is twice as tall as that basic graph. Okay, if you look at any distance horizontally, it's twice as much vertically. So this is a vertical expansion by two. So if we're trying to write an equation for that, we are going to write absolute value of x plus 2 for the 2 to the right. We're going to write plus 4 on the end for the 4 up and we're going to put a 2 in front for that vertical expansion by a factor of 2. All right, that is the equation of that function right there. So that is using transformations to graph and analyze absolute value functions.